So we looked at even degrees of secant, so now let's look at odd, and it's a different approach. So first of all, the smallest odd degree would be secant to the first, and we know that one from Calc 1. It involved a algebra manipulation, but we saw that that was equal to natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent. And then let's go up to the next odd, which would be cubed. And then every odd above that will be a similar process as that. So let's see what happens to integrate secant cubed. So we've been taking advantage of these Pythagorean identities and all of these that involved either factoring off tangent squared or secant squared. Um, and we start off that same way, but this one's less obvious. Uh, it's very tempting to want to jump in right at this stage and go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity there on secant squared, but actually that ends up getting you in a circle that goes nowhere. We're going to um, do integration by parts here, which is not obvious as a choice. If you had never seen it before, I wouldn't expect you to have guessed that that was the next thing we would do. So our u is secant. So du is secant x tangent x, which leaves our dv to be secant squared, which that makes sense, right? Because that's something we know um, the antiderivative of, and it's nice and easy, it's just tangent. Okay, now, although we didn't use the Pythagorean identity, the point of the Pythagorean identity was to introduce some tangents, and notice we, we did introduce tangent into the problem here by using parts. So now, this is equal to uv, Integration by parts says that that integral is u times v minus the integral of v du, so that's um, secant x tangent squared x dx. So now we have an integral that does have a mix of secant and tangent. Unfortunately, it's not quite there yet, right? It almost looks like we could get away with a u sub there, but the derivative of tangent is secant squared. We only have secant. The derivative of secant, secant tangent, we don't have its derivative either. So we're not quite there yet, but now we wanted to do that Pythagorean identity. Now's the time to do it. So we're going to use tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. And now I'm going to distribute that secant. So I'll have a secant cubed minus secant. And then I'm going to break that apart into two integrals. So I have secant x tangent x, and then minus an integral of secant cubed, and then minus a minus plus an integral of secant. Now, what do we have? We have an integral of secant, which we know how to do. And that's actually the power reduction part of this. So whatever degree you started with here, at this stage, you're going to have two degrees less. So we had a cubic. It lowered it to a first degree. If we were um, starting with 13th degree here, this would be 11th. This one will end up being still the degree we had to start with, which seems bad. But remember, we saw something like this in the integration by parts. This is that sort of unorthodox where you end up back where you started. So remember, you can view this as an algebra equation that we need to solve. On the left side, we have that the integral of secant squared equals all of this. So I want to get rid of this 
integral secant by adding it to both sides of the equal sign. So right now what we have is the integral of secant cubed here equals this. So by bringing it to the other side, I'm going to rewrite that now. What we have, adding this integral over here, we now have two of those integrals of secant cubed. And then on the other side, we had that secant x tangent x, and then we had this integral secant, which we know to be natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent plus our constant. Well, we wanted to know what the integral of secant cubed is. Right now we've got twice that, so divide by 2 on both sides. So that tells us then that the integral of secant cubed is one half this. Secant x tangent x plus natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent plus our constant. Okay, so two things. First of all, this is a power reduction, so you don't, the only reason we were able to be done at this stage was that we reduced from 3 to 1, and we know how to integrate 1. If this was secant to the 13th, all this would have accomplished was to get us down to secant of the 11th. Secant to the 11th, we would do this whole process again to get it down to secant uh, to the 9th, and then you'd do it again to get down to the 7th, fifth, third, first. So for practical purposes, you wouldn't want to do that by hand over and over again, but mathematically that's important for us to know because what it tells us is no matter what that power is, there is an antiderivative. It may take a while to get to it, um, but there is one. So um, no matter what odd degree we have, eventually you'll get down to first degree and you'll be able to integrate that. So what we've seen now is that no matter what degree sine is, what degree cosine is, what degree tangent is, or what degree secant is, all of those have antiderivatives. And that's important to keep in mind because not everything has an antiderivative. So knowing that it can be done exactly is important. Um, now we've kind of steered away from cosecant and cotangent here. What about those? Well, because of the relationship between the Pythagorean identities, this process is the same for the cofunctions. So we know how to do even powers of secant, so even powers of cosecant work the same way. Odd powers of secant work the same as odd powers of cosecant. And same thing with tangent and cotangent. We learned the process for degrees of tangent. The degrees of cotangent work the same way. So actually we've covered all the trig functions. Um, powers of all the trig functions have antiderivatives.